We'll pick up here directly where we left off, which is that we are trying to use the fundamental theorem to take a definite integral and computing the indefinite integral, computing the antiderivatives, requires u substitution. There are essentially two ways of handling this, which I'll call method one and method two. So method one, I'll state as follows. Do the U substitution to find the antiderivative antiderivative then convert back to x demonstrating this via an example. We are trying to compute this definite integral. And to do so, we need antiderivatives. So let's go down here. And that's very much not what I wanted to write. Let's compute the indefinite integral of 3x squared times the sine of x cubed dx. And we already did this step in a previous video, but if you haven't watched that, will that u be the inside function? du is 3x squared dx. So we can convert everything into u. The antiderivative of the sine is the negative cosine. And then we convert back to x the negative cosine of u, which is x cubed. And now that we have the antiderivatives, we can use the fundamental theorem. Remember that when we use the fundamental theorem, we don't bother with the constant. So the cosine of pi cubed, that's not something that we know. We'll just write it down. I mean, it's not like an angle whose cosine we've memorized, minus negative 
the cosine of zero cubed is the cosine of zero, which is one. And we could get a decimal approximation of this if we were so inclined. This probably, at least I certainly hope so, seemed like a natural way of going about the problem. And if you want to do it this way, that's certainly fine by me. It's not really how the textbook presents it or how most textbooks present it. The way most textbooks present it, what I'll call method two, is to change the limits of integration. And what could I mean by that? We'll find out shortly. Let's attack this same problem a second time. The integral from zero to pi of three x squared times the sine of x cubed dx. We need an antiderivative if we're to use the fundamental theorem. And we once again, this is a u substitution type of integral. We've got composition and this inside function has a derivative that then appears u equals x cubed du equals 3x squared dx. Let's rewrite all of this in terms of u. The sign of u du. And let's write limits of integration here. This is a definite integral. This needs to be a definite integral. And the way we think of this is as follows. Our limits of integration match our variable. If our variable is x and we're integrating with respect to x, then x is going from 0 to pi. If our variable is u and we're integrating with respect to u, u is going from something to something. From what to what? Well, u equals x cubed. So when x equals zero, u is zero cubed or zero. And when x equals pi, u is pi cubed. The antiderivative of the sine, and you see we're not converting back to 
x is now, this is a definite integral, we can just take it. The antiderivative of the sine is the negative cosine. We are evaluating from zero to pi cubed. So the negative cosine of pi cubed minus the negative cosine of zero or negative um, minus one, so plus one. And of course, whichever method we use, if they're both valid ways of approaching the problem, we'd better get the same answer, which indeed we do. It's, um, it's my experience, I guess, that calculus textbooks really try to try to get their students to do this, but that students very much prefer to approach these problems this way. I'm not going to push you in one direction or the other. You get the correct answer, whichever of these two ways of thinking you employ.